and I'm going to talk today about the best practices uh, of quality assurance for net zero energy buildings design. Well, uh, I was introduced, my name is Shady Atia, and I work in Liège University in Belgium. Now, before starting, I would like to share with you some basics to make sure that we are on the same page. When I'm talking about net zero energy buildings, I'm talking about buildings that are grid connected, they are highly energy efficient, and uh, build, they are buildings that can balance the total uh, annual energy consumption uh, through renewables on site. So this is the first uh, statement to make sure about. Uh, there is another definition for nearly zero energy building. In this sense, buildings are almost uh, achieving this goal, and therefore we distinguish the nearly zero energy building from net zero energy buildings. Net zero energy building, they must have a, a neutral uh, balance on an annual basis. Well, uh, to get you further on, on in the definition, we are talking here about um, an approach of uh, net zero energy building or a definition that is uh, quantifiable and it is based on a universal metric which is uh, the site energy use intensity metric, the EUI. And in this sense what we try to do, we try to measure the total energy consumption uh, at the end use for lighting equipment, cooling, uh, pumps and fans, heating and hot uh, domestic water or hot water in general, depending on the building type uh, and function. And we divide it by the gross building area in order to uh, get an estimation of the total energy use intensity. And depending on the renewables production, we should come up to a zero energy balance. Now, some other countries, they define net zero energy buildings based on a primary energy uh, use indicator. In this sense, the main difference will be that we have to look at the energy sources, the losses, transmission, delivery and production, and we will do the same exercise of calculation, however, at the source of the energy generation. Now, when we look at this definition of net zero energy building, it's based on principles of high performance uh, building design, and we are looking at three major principles, which are the trias energetica, mainly to dim diminish the energy losses, uh, use uh, sustainable energy sources, and finally, use uh, fossil fuel as efficient as uh, possible. And these are the principles that can guide us, take us towards a um, uh, first energy neutral buildings, and finally, hope we hope to reach also carbon uh, neutral buildings. Now, in order to get into uh, the challenges of net zero energy buildings, net zero energy buildings are almost more than 10 years now present uh, on the political agenda of many countries. And when we look at the challenges face facing those type of building, we find that in the European Union, also in the United States, there is a kind of type of certification. In Europe, it's the uh, energy performance certification. And as you can see, this is an example of where we are uh, today regarding the formalization of net zero energy building. We are creating certificates to uh, assess the efficiency of buildings. And as you can see, this is a case study where a building on the left side, uh, it has a gas boiler and photovoltaic. Uh, um, and some basic uh, energy efficiency characteristics of the envelope is having a higher grade of C compared uh, with a building that has a gas boiler and a good envelope. So it's very important to take care of these uh, regulations and how we are implementing them because that's not the purpose. If we see this uh, result and compare it with the basic rule of Trias Energetica of diminishing energy losses from the beginning and investing in efficiency, we find here that we have a kind of confusing confusion and we are confusing the market by not putting priority where should we invest in energy efficiency of the building and then should come renewables. Another example of where we are today when we look at uh, uh, net zero energy buildings, the energy performance certification, they penalize uh, net zero energy building with clean heating. You can see on the left side, this is a gas boiler, and on the right side we have a heat pump, and the gas boiler building has a higher certification or an efficiency indicator. And again, this is very dangerous, because if we are looking to have an, a higher electrification rate for Europe, for sure we will have an energy mix. But if we want to get off carbon, we will need to abandon uh, fossil fuel and, and gas. And in this sense, uh, a heat pump coupled to a renewable system can be much, much more effective and much more environmental friendly 
uh, and this is a debate that we are currently uh, having in the European Union. So let's go further on the challenges that we are having and facing today. When it comes to the design of these high performance buildings, we are in a transformation phase and those are new design practices that many offices and architects and designers, building professionals are not uh, aware of. But we have problems with large window to wall ratio, as you can see in this facade. We have a lack of external shading. Many people are underestimating uh, the solar radiation. We have inoperable windows in any net zero energy buildings. And these are all problems. And we are unable to place properly the low emissivity layers, depending on the uh, dominated cooling dominated or heating domination of the building and this is also a cause of, of confusion for many designers and finally we are having a over we have an overestimation of night cooling in different net zero and net zero energy buildings uh, when we look further um, on the design quality of net zero energy buildings we can see also that many designers are um, unaware on the importance of a high uh, ceiling height and uh, under the pressure of cost, under the pressure and the ignorance of uh, reduction of the heated spaces or the cooled, mechanically cooled or mechanically heated spaces, many designers just simply reduce uh, uh, the overall uh, ceiling height, which is uh, very negative uh, in the overall uh, uh, performance of buildings. There's undersizing of mechanical ventilation system and ducts, and we are underestimating the importance of having sufficient flow rates to assure air quality uh, in buildings and under the pressure of energy efficiency, we jeopardize in many uh, cases thermal comfort. And definitely acoustic problems are also associated with uh, the new installation of fully mechanically ventilated net zero energy buildings. So these are all examples of issues related to design qualities that uh, most uh, designers are encountering uh, based on cases in the last 10 years. Now, when we look at the construction sites, again, there is an issue because we are in a transformation market. All suppliers, all contractors, all subcontractors, they need to learn about uh, how to protect the heated or the mechanically uh, cool spaces, how to make sure that the buildings are compact, and how to prevent leakages through air tightness and perform a blower door test uh, on a in a systematic way while sealing all uh, potential leaking uh, uh, cracks or openings. So this is also a very important measure of quality uh, that uh, we are uh, finding that the uptake of the construction market or the construction uh, industry is facing challenging challenges in this regard. This is another example. Uh, we are talking today, it's not a surprise, future buildings and even existing buildings that will get renovated by default, they must be highly insulated, they must have a good air tightness indicator and as you can see if we are going to place the insulation without any proper consideration of uh, uh, the quality of the insulation we are losing millions of uh, euros or, or dollars or whatever currency we use uh, and just beautifying uh, the process of design and construction while in reality this should not be the case we should implement insulation properly and this will require a higher supervision from site engineers and better education and vocational training for uh, technical and workers on sites. Another example we are facing a lot also in uh, net zero energy buildings after implementation, there's poor implementation of insulation as you can see, uh, poor air tightness problems and the difficulty to achieve the requirement of uh, low uh, uh, air tightness, uh, for example, infiltration rate lower than 0.6 air change per hour uh, under uh, 50 Pascal pressure. And as you can see another example here in the coming slide, when we do investigative or destructive uh, testing for envelope, we figure out that there's even condensation problems and lack of proper uh, uh, gluing of the different uh, 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 insulation uh, elements. Another example you can see here that when we dismantle the very famous ethics, most probably ethics will be the most common envelope technology that will bridge us uh, for the coming years. Ethics are externally, uh, um, uh, external insulation construction systems uh, uh, and they are mainly based on gluing uh, big parts of insulation on the internal walls, but you can see that in many cases under the fast construction and the fast pressure of competitivity 
and uh, cost uh, reduction, uh, they end up being not appropriately implemented and placed on uh, the insulated or the expected uh, insulated surfaces. So these are all expect these are all kind of problems that the industry is facing regarding design, regarding construction, and therefore we need to uh, focus uh, more on the quality and the design of net zero, net zero energy building and try to distill, uh, extract more learned lessons. So let me share with you some learned lessons related to this uh, matter. Well, we have serious design quality issues. The market is facing a transformation resulting in trial and error approaches. Unfortunately, this, the trial and error approaches are the most common human uh, uh, mistake that happen on, on in the industry of in the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. There is competitive pricing practices that encourage design teams and contractors to reduce or eliminate uh, design solutions, which is in this sense is totally damaging by taking out, for example, shading or uh, 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 abandoning testing uh, air tightness and so on and for sure there is a lack of expertise regarding the design and construction teams and many consortia are built and formed without any investment in prior knowledge uh, uh, before uh, endeavoring such uh, high performance buildings. Now when we look also to other learned lessons well there is a big under a capitalistic approach where we we are uh, operating today it's very difficult to switch the mindset of many design teams and tell them that you can really influence the factor of cost by working on different types of parameters. The, actually, the choice of the construction technology, whether, whether it's a bearing wall system or a post and column system, is it a steel construction or a, or a concrete construction or a timber construction or a hybrid uh, between those systems, it can significantly influence the cost. So instead of chasing quality and reducing the quality uh, under the pressure of cost, uh, design teams can early on select strategically uh, construction technology that can give them margins with their budgets, budgets and then allow them to assure quality uh, during design and implementation. Also, the choice of uh, design envelopes, as you can see, the second graph can influence the, the cost up to, can increase it up to 13% or decrease it up to 7%, dependent, depending on the choice of your envelope uh, technology and design. Uh, construction and structural system can vary significantly up to 20% reduction of cost up to two, and up to positive 27%. Uh, increase of cost, so the choice of your construction and uh, structural system should be taken into account as a, a firm or as a consultant, and also the choice of HVAC and renewable energy uh, systems design has a significant influence ranging from plus 22% to minus 15%. And finally, the most influential factor on cost of net zero energy building is the project delivery type. Is it a design uh, bid build the process it will be very expensive once you go for a design and build process you can significantly reduce the cost because early on the contractor the implementer of the building will get together with the design team and they will be able to make a lot of uh, short uh, cuts and reduce the cost and make uh, informed decisions uh, that will allow them to uh, reach the targets without uh, having a high budget or extra cost for these buildings. So this is a very important lesson here and as you can see the more you invest in a net zero energy building keeping into account uh, intelligent project delivery type and a good partnership between the client and the design team and the construction uh, company uh, the more you can invest in architectural features reduce uh, the cost of the delivery method reduce the cost invested in HVAC system compared to conventional uh, system and therefore these are uh, one of the uh, five major uh, uh, parameters that we learned uh, from practice that we can influence as designers uh, and contractors or the construction engineers in order to make sure that the buildings are kept under the good uh, the same cost budget compared to conventional buildings while maintaining a high quality for the net zero energy buildings. Well, what else learned lessons uh, could we distill from the experience? Well, introducing design and construction reviews is one of the learned lessons. On the moment that a company is aware and um, 
conscious about the complexity of these buildings and how they require to have a phase of quality assurance after design and after construction, uh, directly the quality of these buildings are uh, significantly or remarkably, uh, remarkably even improved. A uh, learned lesson also are uh, inciting that we simplify the building services and automated solutions and try in this sense to simpli simplify overall mechanical systems and integrate them with the HVAC system and introduce simple overriding uh, automated uh, solutions uh, without complexity and use basic control technology that users are familiar with. We should not forget that people who will use uh, net zero energy buildings most of the time they come from a domestic reality or they live in domestic houses where they are used for example to use a thermostat just a movable thermostat manually movable thermostat there is no shame at all to introduce simple control technologies that users are already using in their homes and introduce them in net zero energy buildings so that we can make sure that operation and occupancy will not face major uh, failures and finally, simplify the building management automation systems. It's very important to avoid black box BMS or BAS because at the end of the day, it will be the user, the facility uh, manager who would like to go back and fetch an algorithm and change the assumptions of the algorithm based on feedback coming from occupants after occupancy. So it's very important to keep the building management systems and the building automation systems open access simple to manage with simple algorithm if what if scenarios that later on facility managers and occupants based on feedback and real use of building can override these uh, pre or during the design phase uh, uh, set uh, algorithm and criteria so these are four uh, important learned lessons that we also can distill from our uh, experience uh, monitoring and doing post-occupancy evaluation for several net zero energy building in the last uh, 10 years. Now I would like to uh, close my presentation with some best practices hints in order to uh, assure and articulate better what I wanted to say. First of all I advise uh, design teams and uh, construction companies to seek cost-effective approaches. They should look at delivery processes that allow for partnership from the beginning. The old linear design process of design, bid, and build is not able to work anymore in the context of complex and sophisticated high-performance buildings. Design teams should be from day one all on the same table, including the owner, including the design team, including uh, the construction companies, company or the, or the contractors or the subcontractors, and we, they must also include the owners or owner representative who will be potentially occupying buildings, and in this is sense they can have cost-effective approaches. The second thing they should look at in general as best practices, uh, any uh, design manager or, or, a, or a project manager, assuring design reviews. Today, one of the biggest problems we are facing in the design and construction of zero energy building that they do not go through design reviews. Design reviews should be based on checklists that are checking all the elements properly, the use of dynamic building performance simulation early on to avoid any risk of overheating, look at the design comfort condition of summer because net zero energy buildings by default, even in cold uh, countries or heating dominated countries, they will have high insulation, they will be airtight, and they will have glazing, and this means that the risk of overheating will be high, and therefore the integration of external solar shading devices, whether manually operated or automatedly operated, is an essential and crucial element that should be checked and uh, prescribed when we do design reviews to make sure that buildings are not going to risk, and uh, occupants at the end will have a good well-being keep their productivity and satisfaction. The other aspect related to best practices should be looking at assuring construction reviews through uh, uh, prefabricated and construction standardization as much as possible. If we can do things or elements part of the building off-site, this can be a good uh, thing to do because we can assure off-site integration and quality and standard respect and compliance. And then when we assemble on-site, we can start to do our test, like the blower door test, which is essential for any net zero energy building, uh, standardization of thermal nodes details, whether for air tightness or whether for uh, thermal conductivity. 
So these are all important aspects and definitely we should look at investing in occupancy education. It's unbelievable that we pay so much money in buildings that are high-tech buildings and then we do not uh, provide minimum training, minimum interaction with users to make them familiar with the use of these uh, buildings that are depending on passive and active uh, measures and systems. So as you can see, in a long process of a net zero energy building design, construction and operation, design reviews must be introduced especially after the implementation documents and design reviews can be done by expert consultants who are having experience and they are monitoring already net zero energy buildings and they know what are the problems especially in the context or context specific or climate specific regions every region will have its own problem and seeking those local experts who are tracing and following building can allow us to understand uh, if the building is appropriate or not, not before going to the construction phase and then after implementation, we can have a second round of reviews, which is the construction review, which can be part of the commissioning process, but it should be done seriously, it should be done through measurement, and it should be involving third party. I always advise that design reviews and construction reviews should be implemented by third parties. Well, by that I can end, I end up my presentation. Thank you very much, and thank you for this generous invitation. Uh, further details can be found in my book. Uh, it was already mentioned before, otherwise I'm open for any comments and discussion 